Today we're going to be reviewing this Show Me Me electric scooter next on Now You Know. After I start to show people this scooter, they usually ask me why I bought it. My Nissan Leaf doesn't have a very big range. It's around 80 to 90 miles. If I'm going on a long trip, there will be times where I'll need to charge at my destination, whether it be a concert, museum, beach, park, whatever. But usually there's not a charger in the parking lot of the place. However, there's usually a charger within about five miles of my destination. It wouldn't make sense for me to park at the charger and then hike five miles to my final destination because of time and I wouldn't want to be all sweaty. So that's where this scooter comes in. I can plug in my car, ride my scooter to my destination, then ride it back, and my car is all charged and ready to go home. I've been keeping an eye out for this brand, and up until recently it's only been available in Europe. Now it's available on Amazon for $500. So I got one, and I'm here to tell you about its pros and cons. Pro number one, the range. With a range of 18.9 miles in perfect conditions, this scooter doesn't give me much range anxiety. I don't think I'd want to ride it much longer than a few miles at a time, so this usually can go a few days between charging. If you want to go for maximum range, you can engage eco mode to squeeze every last mile out of the battery. This will limit your speed and acceleration, but will extend the range by an extra few miles. Pro number two, the folding design. The folding design allows me to pop it right in the back of my car and allow me to always have it with me, meaning I can either use it while I charge my leaf or in some cases, save myself some range if I want to scoot out to lunch. Design and build. This thing looks pretty cool. It won some design awards and it's not too hard to see why. The powder coat and aluminum body seem pretty well put together. There's some bolts you'll have to tighten now and then, but other than that, it feels solid. Lights. The Mi Scooter comes with a really bright headlight, which can be switched on and off. It's great for riding around at twilight and even works at night. It comes with a brake light that can be turned on continuously for better night visibility. I think that this is a great safety feature and I usually have both the headlight and the rear light turned on at all times. Cruise control. In the app, you can enable cruise control. I found it a little freaky at first, but now I like it on long rides. If you were hoping for one-handed riding though, think again. I found it hard to control with just one hand. Fun. We've brought this to events and it's a crowd pleaser. This thing is fun to ride. The controls are intuitive, almost everyone gets it immediately, and no one seems to want to get off. Software lock. Using the app, you can software lock your scooter. When I was testing it, it made it almost impossible to ride away, and beeped the whole time. This doesn't protect it from being picked up and carried away, but it renders the scooter unusable to a would-be thief. This next section I'm calling thoughts. It's not necessarily pros and not necessarily cons, but things that I think that you ought to know. Weighing in at 26.9 pounds, or 12 kilograms, this thing is not as light as it looks. While it's folded, you can grab it just about anywhere in the middle. It's fairly comfortable in the hand, and it doesn't interfere with your legs too much. But at 27 pounds, I didn't feel like carrying it in from the parking lot into the office. You can roll it on its front wheel while it's folded to take some of the weight off, but it takes two hands to control and is still unwieldy. Regen braking. The Mi Scooter has a stopping distance of 13.1 feet. It has speed-dependent regen braking in the front and a disc brake in the rear. When you ease off the throttle, the regen braking kicks in. It's configurable from the app with three different levels, from an easy glide to what feels like pretty substantial braking. I like how regen would allow me to slow from the top speed quickly, but is softer at slower speeds, allowing me to navigate obstacles without ever hitting the brake. It shows that they put some thought into this scooter to include regen braking and all. What a great feature. Top speed. The Mi Scooter has a top speed of 15.5 miles an hour. I think this is an excellent top speed. Fast enough to be fun and effective at travel, but not so fast that you lose control. Even going downhill, the scooter will engage regen braking to keep you going the top speed. Charging. It takes about four hours to fully charge from zero. The app. This scooter has an app that can connect to it via Bluetooth. It can do the following. It shows you your speed, battery level, average speed, and mileage. It also allows you to turn on cruise control, continuous brake light, regen braking levels, and software lock. Ride comfort. I hadn't been on a scooter since I was a kid, and the marketing material shows people riding on perfectly smooth surfaces. 
Here in the real world, there are bumps. This has nice 8.5 inch pneumatic tires, which help smooth out rough surfaces, but do little to mitigate actual potholes and cracks. Hitting a bump if you weren't expecting it can feel a bit like stepping on a landmine. So keep wary of the road surface and bend your knees if you're going over rough terrain. The only con that I could come up with would be the deck height. My old Razor scooter from when I was nine had a deck height of about two to three inches. This scooter, however, is up at about five inches off the ground, which is deceivingly high. Some people that have tried have accidentally stepped off weird and hurt their foot a little bit. I've done it a couple times, and I don't think that it's a huge issue. I'm used to it now and it's not that much of a problem anymore. But I think that it's something that you should be cognizant of, that you're up a, quite a bit higher than you think you might be. The other thing that the deck height affects is the kickoff. You're going to have to bend your stationary leg a bit more than you'd think in order to kick off successfully. There needs to be some explanation as to how the scooter actually functions. First of all, it's not a motorcycle. The throttle doesn't always turn on the motor. In order to get any power from the motor, you first need to kick off the scooter. You do this like any other scooter. Then you press the throttle and away you go. To wrap up, I really, really would recommend this scooter. I think that it's good for the money, it's fun, it's fast, it's effective at both travel and exploring. If you live near a city where these are rentable, I would recommend heading in and checking them out so you can get a little taste before you buy. Overall, I think that this is a great way to see a city, a great way to travel, it's a great way to explore with zero emissions. We hope you enjoyed this review of the Show Me Scooter. Um, if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We have an Amazon affiliate link down below. Um, so if you buy this Show Me Scooter, um, you can actually use our link and some money will go to supporting the show. So thank you so much for watching. Now you know.